Hello and welcome to our time. Yes, It's welcome. nice to have you here again. <laughs> Thank you. We never go away, do we? No, we don't. Uh, on t this episode, we have a bit of a show business feel. Yes, we do. We're talking to a young juggler, Josh Kroll, and... Deb Caddy's on the programme. An old friend of yours. Yes, yes, I've worked with Deb. She's not old as you, but no, she's an old friend. <laughs> and we're also going to find out how to deal with the bank. But first of all, welcome to our time, Josh Kroll. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Josh, um, you just recently in the Adelaide Fringe finished a show, haven't you? Yeah. Just describe what you do. Well, I'm a circus performer and uh, the Fringe show was a group acrobatic show, so I had mm -hmm. a couple other people in it as well. Uh, it just came about basically just a group of us trained together in the same gym. We thought it would be a cool idea to make a show and, yeah, it's turned out to be really good. Why did you choose juggling? Um, I don't know really, it just really, it just happened. Did it choose <laughs> Naturally, It chose me, yeah, yeah. juggling chose me. And I think okay. that's, that's why I was interested in having you on the program because as you travel through life, you often discover there are certain people that just seem to be attracted to a particular form mm. of, whether it be entertainment, I guess it's the same in sciences or mathematics. Or career. Yeah, but clearly you were, an, in the old vernacular, a natural. Uh, I guess so. I mean, at first it was kind of... I, I taught myself how to juggle, so I taught the incorrect way at first, but okay. I guess it naturally happened in a, by just training hard. I guess. So, but you went then... Your mum and dad must have taken you then to the circus school here yeah. in South Australia. Yeah, so kids, the yep. SA Circus Centre. Um, yeah, I just started there and started teaching. How old teaching. were you? I was about 10 years old. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Fantastic. But you said you learnt the wrong way. But they yeah. say when you've learnt the wrong way, it's very hard to learn the right way then. So did well, it take you... It wasn't really the wrong way, it was the harder way. The harder, okay. the harder way. So it was actually kind of easier, easier. learning the yep. more basic. Oh, okay, but you do some stuff that, that is really quite unique to you, that I, well, I feel is unique to you because I haven't really seen it before. Yeah. But you were saying before that YouTube has been a great influence because you can see the Definitely. best in the world doing whatever. Yeah. Because, yeah, just, it's a great community. It has Everyone puts their videos up and you can get different ideas. You can see different shows. And Does it also give mm. you a bit of a challenge to be better? Yeah, definitely. That's mm. probably the reason why I stuck with it, is just the inspiration that I've seen online. And to improve on yeah. different things. But with you, Fantastic. it's not just the juggling thing, because you're juggling established things, like, like the balls that are in front of us. Can you juggle some now? Sure. While you're sitting down? Is it that easy? Yeah. OK. Now, can you rub your tummy and pat your head at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to try that. that. <laughs> um, I'll, work, I'll work on that. <laughs> OK, later. Yeah. Um, but the acrobats as well, was that something that started from childhood? Yeah, that was... I kind of did everything at once, but I focused more on the juggling at first and then later on got more interested in the acrobatics. And Do you ride a unicycle as well? I can ride one. Yeah. They often... The Do three things yeah, come together. At the same time? I haven't actually tried that, but uh, okay. probably should get around to doing both at once. <laughs> yes. Now, you're not that old either. How old are you now? I'm 19. 19, yep. yeah. So the life in front of you is, I guess, on the road in many ways. Yeah, I mean, it's just starting now because I've, I've finished school and getting into all the touring and stuff like that. How do your parents stuff. feel about that? Are they happy for you to be they're, they're on the road? They're pretty supportive about it, yeah. Are they? Oh, yeah. that's great. Josh did a show down at our theatre um, last year, was it last year or the year before? Last Doesn't matter, I can't remember. But one of the, yeah. Mum and Dad, I can absolutely assure you, were very supportive because they were there fixing everything and Mum was oh, sorting okay. them out, as yeah. mums do, yeah. and yeah. making sure he ate at the right time and Dad brought in the set. <laughs> yeah. but, but isn't that a lovely thing? It's yeah. lovely that your parents can actually share that beginning mm. experience, but then obviously they're going to have to let you go. Cause yeah, you're... for sure, yeah. I mean, I, it's probably starting now because I'm doing all my managing myself now. And okay. Yeah. And is it difficult for you to find who the people are who can be your prospective, both audiences and employers in the future? Uh, f f f and what I mean by that, are you looking to join a circus, create oh. your own circus? Um, a bit of both. I want to try and do my own stuff and do other people's work as well. Is there an agent, though, that would help be able to help you? You know how actors uh, and singers have agents to, to find them well, the work. Well, yeah, they basically are. There, there are, are agents, yeah. yeah. But it's also finding your own stuff as well on the side. Okay. It's a bit of both. What What's your aim? What's the goal that you have? Is it, um, you know, like everybody aims to get wise? to... Sorry? Uh, with performing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, probably just getting a, a touring company going on, like just touring throughout the year. And yeah. 
Okay. Well, the show that you did during the Fringe was sort of a half indoor outdoor, wasn't it? Yeah. The audience was yeah. undercover and you were out. Basically, and yeah. And I hope that it didn't rain. <laughs> it did rain one one show, but luckily we were able to swap venues for that one. Oh, that but was lucky because with lucky. what you're doing, and we're just looking at the footage now of part of that show with yep. the acrobat section. Mm. Uh, it was great to have the other people working with you, but I mean, what you're physically doing here is fantastic. Thanks. And um, the, the good thing about this is it's your own personal health too because mm. obviously you're a young bloke, your body's in great shape as you can see from the video um, and the future for you is obviously going to be learning to look after your body so that you can perform yeah. regularly because if you're working in some of the shows, you're doing four or five different shows a year. Definitely, Because yeah. you went over to Singapore recently yeah. and did exactly that. And that's just you? every day as well. There's no... Yeah. Well, there's one there's no rest day, but besides that, it's every day, three shows a day. And That's it's right. Pretty and you've just got to keep fine. doing it and not yeah. drop anything and keep yep. your body flipping and yeah. all of that. Exactly. Those and just warming but, up properly as well. It's really important. Yes, exactly. But getting yeah. back to the juggling thing, and we'll have a look at the juggling as well. Uh, yes, the juggling as well. At the moment, you're juggling um, balls and you're juggling clubs, the juggling clubs. Have you ventured into any other unusual things? Fire. Uh, unusual things. <laughs> I mean, if anyone gives me an item, I normally can juggle it. Okay. So. Um, but I've been training a lot of uh, the juggling rings as well, mm -hmm. so doing all the body throws and stuff like that. And okay. I also sometimes mix the props together. Chainsaws? Chainsaws as well, yeah. Oh. Of course. I was joking. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> in truth, chainsaws you've got to be a bit careful of, yes. do with knives and everything yes. else, but like with all magic and illusion, there can be ways of making sure there that you're is, safe. Yeah. Exactly, with that. They're normally specially made for juggling, so oh, the they? weight and stuff. But yeah. Don't tell anyone that. But, yeah. No, just don't. Keep that amongst ourselves, <laughs> please. It's between us. Um, so, uh, Josh, as you as you develop this further, um, I can see that your career is going to take off in your own direction. I think you've got that sort of um, forward-thinking ability. I think you showed that early in the piece, and I think you'll probably develop something else. Mm. I know you're not greatly fond of the Cirque du Soleil model, but do you have a model of the type of presentation you'd like to do in mind? Um, well, I do, I do like Cirque du Soleil. Um, the style I did for the Fringe show was more urban, more raw. It was, yeah. Um, Although Cirque tends to get a bit lost in, what, what are they on about now as they hang upside down? <laughs> uh, anything, really. They do, yeah, exactly. they do everything. Yeah. But, but the stories are a bit like you think, I know there's supposed to be a story here, but what's all that about? Yeah, I mean, they, they have like crazy costumes as well, but... Um, do you? No, mine's pretty normal. Well, we. The style that we go for at the moment is just being ourselves on stage yeah. and presenting that to the, the audience oh. so they kind of learn who we are as a person as well. Yeah. Um, but you I would say how many of you? Uh, there's five of us at the okay. moment. Yeah. Okay. We also had a DJ as well for the French show. But yes, who ended up might, rapping. We might get him back. Yeah, <laughs> rapping at the end and surprised everybody. Yeah, <laughs> that surprised me as well because we didn't know who was going to do it. Oh, really? We kept that was it. amazing. Yeah. Well, maybe we can just show a little bit of that, and the guy doing the, the turning on the floor is, yeah. is exactly that. He's really good. Now, I think we're about to be moved, we Janice, because okay. we want to actually have a look at you juggling, Josh. Sure. And although it's, although what we're doing, oh, are you taking that? Yes, I Hello, am. Hello, who are you? Did you just wander in? Do you know this boy at all? No, I don't. Okay, so Josh, I um, starting off, so when somebody learns to juggle, yeah. how do you start? Where does it start? Okay, just come forward a bit. Basically, more. starting with one and yep. just crossing it to the other side and just trying to get it at the same height every time, not too far out, not too but far But you're not far. really looking at the ball either. You want to right? look at the peak of the ball, so you right. don't want to follow it the whole time, but instead yeah. just look at the top. And is this just a brain training process to it, the fact that we have this sort of peripheral vision, you know that you're actually, yeah. your hands are in the right place? Yeah, most people think they've got to follow it the whole time, but yeah. it's just watching the, the top of it. So how many do you juggle all together? Uh, I do, I perform eight, but I've done nine. Okay, yep. grab but we... grab those and just I mean this is this is not your show, this is just doing this for us. Yeah, cool. Just show us what you're made of. And don't knock the lights out. <laughs> yeah. I'll try not to. I like the stuff you do that that you're rolling stuff over your your shoulders and uh, particularly with the clubs yeah, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. You want to have a go? No. You told me you juggled. You <laughs> told me you no, were. No, I just tried it. And I, do, I used to, but I know I honestly could do three. Okay, give but me. But I can't. Give no, me, give me, not now. How many do you want? I've tried well, oh, give me a break. I've never done it before. So what have I got to do? I've got okay. to look there. 
So you're going to throw the first one, well, right yeah. hand, first one up. When it's going to come down, you throw the second one. So it goes okay. one, two, catch, catch. I can do that. Well, that's that's, it. that's a different technique. I can tap dance as well. That's, I'm better Add at that. Add some stuff to it. Yeah. I'm better at that. <laughs> uh, look, we're, <laughs> we're going to learn a bit more about this and we're going to uh, introduce to you shortly Deborah Caddy, who's just returned from a tour of Phantom of the Opera in China. So stay with us here on Air Time. So, OK, so what am I... So I'm, just up, up, catch, catch. Oh, up. And then oh. that one. Up. One, two, catch. No, you see, cross that's it. the thing. You want to throw it too far, <laughs> don't you? That's the yeah. trouble. Oh. I'll go you back to it. being you a TV it. host. Juggle away, Josh. Juggle away. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thunderous well applause. Done. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for Thank being you. part of our time. Thanks for having me. Let's talk financial planning, making money, saving money. And John Grokey, our financial planner, is here. John, welcome. Um, we've Thank covered you, quite a few topics over the weeks. Uh, if people want to get money, they generally go to a bank. That's probably one of the most important places they can go to. Are they the best place to go to? They could go to a credit union. I was, I, I was thinking that, but the banks probably for uh, mortgages are predominantly still number one, I guess. Generally speaking, the banks will have greater capability to give people a greater concession on the rate. All right. How do you deal with the bank? Do you go and see? I mean, banks have changed dramatically over the years. We were talking they? about that a bit yeah, earlier. Yeah, we you were. used to be able to develop a relationship with a manager, and uh, they would be a person you could probably rely on for a bit of help. Mm. Fully trust, and uh, they had your, uh, well. Best interests at heart. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. Um, I'm not sure whether it's like that now, is it? It, it has changed. Um, the relational part of banking is very different and part of that is because a lot of people now just like dealing with banks and financial institutions on their mobile device. So uh, we want to take a mortgage out, what do we do? Do we ring up, make an appointment or come and see an expert? I think a skilled um, mortgage broker and someone who has experience. So you really need skill and experience because when it comes to borrowing, there are times where the way you structure your borrowings is very important and a skilled and experienced mortgage broker mm -hmm. can ensure that you've structured your debt correctly. So the bank won't necessarily have your interests at heart? Not necessarily. I, I, no, I wouldn't say they wouldn't have your interests at heart, but they aren't able to give you that deeper context around the borrowing. They can talk about interest rate and they can talk about their charges, but it's limited to that with the bank, whereas a skilled mortgage broker, uh, mortgage and finance broker, can actually tell you more about how you should structure your loan so that the way you pay it off is more effective, etc. And is a mortgage broker like a financial planner or is that another area altogether? Financial planners can step across both. For instance, in the business that we run, we've got a dedicated division just for mortgage and finance broking. So we have a team of people who specialise in that and they don't do financial planning. So they're, uh, they're experts. So they're the bane of the bank managers, are they? They the strike fear into their hearts. It, it's interesting you say that because actually mortgage brokers have now got to the point, or mortgage broking, yeah. where 60% of loans are actually not done by the banks, they're done by external parties. OK, all right. John, once again, thank you. No doubt we will be uh, talking with you again in the very near future. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, mate. John Grokey. Some good advice, and hopefully advice that will save us some money as well. Thanks, chaps. Now we know how to talk to the bank. We do. Thank you, Ken. And we'll be back shortly with a wonderful lady, direct from China. Direct? Well, not quite well. direct, but where she's just been performing in Phantom of the Opera, the lovely Deborah Caddy. We'll see you soon. Deb Caddy is here. Deb. 
Jenna, yeah. 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 Angel. Yeah. 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 Ye
Well, I guess you have to do that, don't I've you? I've rest mine for quite a long time now. <laughs> Lazy thing. I sing every morning now, now that I've got my voice back. Yes, I, yes, you did have trouble I do exercise before. every morning. Yep. I still keep it up. Um, so with, with finally getting into the show, you don't get in as a lead character initially. You get in as... Well, I didn't, but... Um, <laughs> well, most people don't. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, I, I was a swing performer and... Um, OK, does that mean you sat on one? Yeah, or? yeah, I was a... <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, th I don't think... No, but it's a term that it isn't used that often. To cover other performers, yeah. if they're off, then you can take their place. Yes, and I don't... Th I think music theatre might be the on one of the only... Um, genres that uses a swing like you have yeah. you have understudies in um, the, the opera and plays and, and plays, things like yeah. that but um, they're usually looking at just one character and and they might not necessarily need to be at the theater when the play's running whereas a swing is always at the theater when the musical is on mm. and but one of the characters you case. played is or was Madame Giry. Yes. Yes. So tell us just that story that happened to you first half, second half. Oh, well, this, this was actually in China, so it was quite recent. But the, the Madame Giry, um, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, belittle her, but she did have a habit of coughing a lot and, you know, pretending to be sick and, <gasps> you know, so sometimes she just go, oh, she's feeling sick and go, oh, you know, she'll be all right, she'll be all right. But this time, um, partway through the show, she went up to the stage management and said, oh, she couldn't go on. I was like, no, no, she'll be right, she'll be right. And they're like, Deb, you have to get ready. And I was already in my chorus costume, a chorus makeup. And I was like, no, no, she'll be right. No, she wasn't right. So I had to, I had 15 minutes to get out of my costume, get her microphone off her, get her uh, wig off her, um, and then get into her costume. So she finished act one, and then I came back in act two. So completely different. Completely different. Bit. Completely different. I don't think the audience would have noticed but, at all. <laughs> not at all. But with, with a show like that that's so heavily costumed, and you've been in those sorts of mm. shows too where you've worn, you know, really heavy stuff, mm. almost anyone could be in the part as long as they could sing the mm. role. Yeah. And I, I know stories in similar shows where the understudies have literally had to sit in the wings in full costume yes. just in case the yes. performer fell over during and never got on. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's a lot of work, isn't it, just and to sort of sit around and not be used? Exactly. But at least you had the opportunity, which was I did. great. So I how did. often did you get that opportunity? Um, so it varied uh, who it varied according to who was playing Madame Jury. Um, some mm. Madame Jury's were stoic and never went off, and some Madame Jury's coughed and went off. So. <laughs> That'd be me. Never let your understudy on. No, they might be better no. than you are. <laughs> now, but, but one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you is... Now that you're not doing that, mm -hmm. obviously you've got to keep working because performers mm -hmm. have to keep working to mm -hmm. perform. Mm -hmm. And you've devised a new show, haven't you? I have. Um, yeah, you have to sort of create your own show sometimes mm. to, to keep yourself in work. So um, as a opera slash music theatre singer, I never thought I could do cabaret or or concert like that. And I, was, I put it off for a long time, but it was always something I wanted to do. Um, and I... I've ended up devising a, a show based on Rogers and Hart music because I, I looked at all the things I liked to sing and nearly all of the songs were Rogers and Hart and I thought, well, there's something in that. So, um, one but of you've th created a whole new story around yeah, I've the I've created songs. a new story. You, you've actually created a whole new work. Yes, I say. have. It's, yes, I have. Mm. Because the, one of the songs that they wrote is Have You Met Miss Jones? And so I was like, ding, <laughs> there's a character, Miss Jones. That's not the Robbie Williams song, is it? No, no. OK. No. This is a bit older than that one. It is, but I <laughs> yeah. just wondered. No. So anyway, I have a character, Miss Jones, and she tells her story of of her growing up and, and life and love and romance and all kinds of things through using the songs of Rogers and Hart, purely Rogers and Hart, no other music. So, Well, yeah. you've done lots of these sounds sort lovely. of shows. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I've seen lovely. Deb doing quite mm. a few of these types of mm. shows. So uh, you may get a tour around Australia. You just I never know. I hope so. So if you hear or see of... Uh, Deborah Caddy in a show called Have You Met Miss Jones? Then go along and have a look at mm. her because she's got a wonderfully engaging personality on stage and the voice is lovely and pure and a new work is always good to see, mm. particularly if you know the songs. Yes. You feel comfortable like it's yeah. an old sock sort yeah. of putting on. <laughs> yeah, well, they're very, they're very well-known songs. So yes. I'd be surprised if someone came along didn't know any of them. Mm. Deb, it's been lovely to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining us. Yeah, Thank you. great to see you. Now, Catch we've learned to again. juggle. Yeah. We should do some me, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave that to Deborah. What do you warm up with? 
Oh, yeah, scale. Just that, just All that, yeah. Well, listen, we'll have a bit of a practice and we'll see you very soon <laughs> on our time. Next time you join us right around Australia, coast to coast, don't forget to have a look at the programs on Facebook. If you've missed a program, we have... And YouTube. Well, we have programs on YouTube. from Facebook, from you can get the link to it. YouTube. So you it's really easy to do that. And we'll see you next time. Take care Dennis. until then. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Thank Deb. you. Keep yourself nice till then. And bye. bye. <laughs>